Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the Carnictus Sorticus as featured in Peter Jackson's 2005 epic King Kong. The Carnictus Sorticus was a worm-like creature that lived in the abysmal chasms of Skull Island. Growing to anywhere between 7 to 13 feet, the Carnictus was undisputably one of the most repulsive denizens of Skull Island. Appearing as large, writhing, serpentine, vermicular carnivores of the tepid sludge that lived in the depths of the chasms, the species primarily fed on the dead and wounded. Lacking eyes or a face of any sort, unless a sphincter more of teeth can be considered a face, the Carnictus were little more than animated stomachs that folded in and out of themselves with repugnant undulations. Though the creatures were slow moving, they were relentless in their attacks, and once they spotted a potential food source, they would not stop until they were either destroyed or had consumed their prey. A Carnictus attacks by biting with its tooth-filled maw and latching onto a potential prey before literally chewing it up alive. As they're totally blind and deaf, the Carnictus hunt purely by sensing vibrations, so if anyone was able to stand perfectly still, they could potentially manage to escape their notice. The Carnictus can stretch its neck out for some distance and will often use this to latch itself onto its prey. They also tend to drag captured food into the vile sludge they call home, drowning their hapless victims as they fed on their insides. The Carnictus were similar to parasitic tapeworms that would infest other species of animal, and the ancestors of the hideous creatures actually used to live in the guts of large predatory dinosaurs, where they devoured the half-digested flesh swallowed by their hosts. At some point in their history, these gut parasites evolved so that they could survive outside the confines of their hosts' intestinal tracts, and over time, the creatures made their new homes in the geothermal, spring-fed sludge that clotted the bowels of the island. In the book The World of Kong, A Natural History of Skull Island, which served as a companion piece to the film, it's theorized that long ago, a V-Rex or a similar predator had fallen into one of the chasms and died. The parasites within then slowly made their way out from the carcass to find themselves in the rich organic river at the base of the pit. Instead of drying up and dying, the parasites actually thrived, warmed by the hot geothermal water bubbling into the syrup of the pits, while sustaining themselves on the flesh of other animals that fell into the chasm from the jungle above. I actually already have a video exploring the V-Rex featured in the film, which I'll leave links to below for you guys to check out at your own leisure. Now, over time, these parasites swelled to disturbing new proportions and soon became carrion-eating scavengers of the abyss. With their new size and strength, they no longer had to wait for dead carcasses and were even able to overwhelm and consume live prey. Requiring very specific environmental conditions, the Carnictus were restricted to a few cavernous rents and sinkholes that had the perfect concentration of food, humidity and heat. If they were unfortunate enough to be carried away by the rivers into more open areas, the cooling temperatures would suck their life away, just as any pit that saw a drought of carrion or fresh meat would also devastate the great worm. I also think that it's important to note that while the adults were susceptible to environmental changes, their eggs could survive for decades in a dormant state, waiting for a return to favourable conditions before hatching and spreading once again. The creatures also had a strange relationship with the arachnoclaws featured in the film, similar to the one their parasitic ancestors shared with large predators, as they would consume the eggs of the arachnids, giving them the ability to feed on the flesh that the Carnictus consumed and grow in a safe environment. The arachnoclaws would then either eat their way out of the massive worms, or crawl out of their orifices before joining them in attacking prey that stumbled into their midst. And, and sometimes, sometimes he's running, sometimes he's protecting you, like he's running and protecting you here. Sometimes, sometimes, I might be into sometimes he's stopping and looking over, over here. It's a sequence in which Naomi is being carried by Kong in New York. I love Peter Jackson's adaptation of King Kong and thought that he and his special effects company, Weta Digital, did a phenomenal job designing the creatures and bringing them to life. Well, that's all for today, folks. Big thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at some of the creatures featured in King Kong. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Ugh! <sighs>